folks. We're here with Jake Arrieta. Jake is a fifth round draft pick in the Baltimore Orioles in uh, 2007. He's currently pitching at Double A Bowie. Uh, after seven starts, Jake's 4 and 1 with a 2.70 ERA, 33 in the third innings pitched, uh, with a 205 batting average against. Uh, Jake, why don't you just uh, give us a synopsis on how the Bay Sox are doing? You guys are playing some pretty good ball, you know, five in a row, and eight out of ten. Been the, the cause for the kind of resurgence, and what do we expect the rest of the way from the team? Well, I think that we uh, we started off fairly slow. Uh, had a hard time putting together our offense and defense. It's kind of getting both clicking okay. at the same time. Yeah. Like I said, we, we won, I think, five in a row. Is that right? Yeah. That's just really because of you know, timely hitting and uh, good pitching, keeping uh, keeping you know uh, the opponents <coughs> you know within two to three runs, allowing our our offense you know, to take some pressure off them. So I feel like they have to go out and score six, seven runs a game. I think that's what's uh, that's what we can attribute our, su our success to is just uh, you know, uh, pretty good pitching to allow our hitters to take that game real strong. After maybe a little bit of a slow start, but what do you attribute that success and that consistency in the last couple starts for you? Well, I think uh, I think I attribute a lot of it to, to being 100 percent healthy. Okay. Uh, I, I streamed my groin a couple starts ago and I kind of had a setback there against Trent. Uh, didn't have a very good start, but uh, you know, uh, I mean I, I didn't pitch very well, but uh, you know, my groin was bothering me uh, pretty much throughout that entire start. But, okay. You know, the past couple of starts, I've, I've been 100 percent healthy. Arms felt great. Uh, just really concentrated on. I have my fastball, my secondary stuff, so that's why we throw it pretty well. Okay, and you mentioned just, you know, you, you like to command the fastball. What are, what are your other strengths as a pitcher, and what pitches, or what do you like to establish when you're out on the mound? Well, first and foremost, I like to establish my fastball in and out. Okay. And, uh, usually I won't get away from that game plan until the second, third, even the fourth inning. Mm -hmm. If hitters are showing me that they're not going to adjust to the fastball they're going to have to play, then I'll just, I'll just stick with that. I don't want to have to throw any breaking stuff. Okay. If they show me that they're going to cheat on the fastball and, and, and kind of step out and you know gear up for that the first pitch, then that's when I'll start mixing in curveball and slider and change up. Okay. Now you mentioned so you got four pitches. I think I read somewhere when you came out of college you were more two pitch fastball slider pitcher. Is that true? Or, and what, what's uh, kind of what have you been working on since you've been drafted by the Orioles? What pitches are you looking to, to establish more? In college, um, most power pitchers don't really need a, a changeup. Okay. I had a changeup. I had a curveball, but. I had really good command on my slider and didn't, didn't need much more than that. So that's um, really um, all I threw in college. But now uh, the hitters are more disciplined, more patient, and uh, just better hitters. So okay. you have to you know, keep, them, keep them guessing. And it, it, it's, it's more than just trying to get those guys out by blowing them by them. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a mind game. You, kind of, you have to trick them and keep, keep them guessing. Is, Really, what uh, what what's made me successful in these past couple starts? Okay. Throwing change up, change up some fastball counts and stuff like that. Okay. Now, do the Orioles as an organization or any of the, the coaches at Bowie, that, like pitching coaches or, or the manager, do they ever encourage you to like put away a pitch for a game just to try and strengthen some other pitches? Does that ever? Well, that or? that's what we uh, we did in spring training. Okay. I didn't throw uh, my first few outings. I didn't throw any any uh, curveballs or sliders. Okay. Primarily fastball changeup, and that's what. Uh, Rick Kranitz wants okay. all the young guys to work on, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's been a, a, an emphasis on my game um, early, early this year is the, the progression of my changeup. Okay, and that's uh, you know, they stress to me is that once I get that pitch down, they can throw that many count is when I'm going to be ready to pitch in the major. Okay. Well, and speaking of Kranitz and the spring training experience, what else did you take away from that? Maybe interactions with other players on the Orioles. What was uh, you know most enjoyable for you about that? Being, being around all the veteran players, uh, Aubrey Huff, Guthrie, Marquez, and Roberts, just uh, just to be in the same locker room with those guys for the, the uh, few weeks that I was there was was a great experience. Okay. And, uh, just to kind of pick their brain and get as much information as I could. And, uh, what I, what I got from the staff as a whole is just basically their um, their philosophy, their pitching philosophy, basically how to attack hitters at the big league level. Okay. And I'm basically just trying to execute that here in the minor leagues to okay. get ready for. Okay, and do you think that pitching philosophy is organization-wide? Is that span? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, just to uh, to pound the zone with everything you got, mm -hmm. um, off-speed pitches, fastball, and to continue to try and get ahead in the count each and every year. Okay, good. Now to shift gears a little bit, over the last three years you've had two opportunities to play with Team USA uh, in the Olympics in 2008 and before that in 2006. Um, what do you what can you take from those experiences to kind of help 
hung the game and hung the craft as a pitcher? Well, I think one thing is that uh, how diverse the game is today. There's there's uh, so many so many players from you know overseas, Dominican, Venezuela, Japan, Korea. Right now, uh, have, having uh, pitched against all all those different cultures and different playing styles, I think it really uh, helps my game and, and gives me that added experience that a lot of players don't have throwing against uh, those type of players. So to be able to know how to pitch certain guys uh, in the lineup, I think is is one of the biggest biggest things that I can take from international play. Okay. And also playing with uh, the guys that I played with on the Olympic team that are, that are much older than me that have been around this game for a long, long time. Just all, all, the, all the information that I was able to take. The well. Orioles kind of, I guess, organizational philosophy seems to be to, to limit pitch counts on a, on a minor league level. Are, are you in favor of that or would you prefer to be able to stretch it out a little bit more in some of your pitches or some of your outings? Uh, I think uh, in some cases, yes. Like uh, the other night, I went seven innings and, and was throwing a pretty good game. Um, the game got rained out, but if we would have continued to play, I would, I would have liked to stay in. But at the same time, um, I, I got my work in. Uh, I worked on all the things that I needed to, and uh, I was consistent throughout the entire game. And I think that that's, that's all the Orioles are looking for, okay. is, is the things that I did out there that night. But you know, as a competitor, as, with, as most pitchers are, right. they'd like to stay in the game longer. But right. they have to realize that um, with the kind of career and the future they have ahead of them, maybe it's more important to um, kind of hold back a little bit and okay. save, save some of those innings for later in the year. Okay, you're building towards something and you don't want to jeopardize that at all. Good. Now looking around at the talent in the organization, especially kind of the pitching talent, does that get you excited about you know, your future with the Orioles and you know, what, what type of talent you're going to be surrounded by? It really does. And you, know, you watch what the Rays have done the past couple of years with all their young players. Mm -hmm. And we all feel that uh, that's something that we can do in the next, in the near future. Right. And, uh, a lot of the young players in this organization have already got um, an opportunity to play in the big leagues this year. Like Will Montanez, he played a little bit last year with Ryan Mold and Bergy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we all feel uh, that it's going to be our time soon. Okay. A lot of the other younger guys, Tillman, myself, Birkin, uh, Mattis, and, uh, you know, we feel like if we just continue to work hard and put in, the, put in our dues in, in the minor leagues, that it's going to pay off uh, in the future. Right, good. So do you think coming up together as a big group, do you think that – Obviously, that's going to be beneficial because you guys are familiar with each other and kind of I think so. can get on the same page. So well, I think we, uh, you know, we form like a, a bond, and you know, in the in spring training when we play against when we play with each other um, on our minor league teams, and we kind of um, form that relationship early on in the minor leagues as opposed to being all thrown in, the, in the, at the big leagues at the same time not knowing each other. Right. So we all kind of. Um, come up together at the same time, mm -hmm. and once we get there, we're going to be even more like a, a close-knit family once we get to the Okay, and on the flip side of that, there's a lot of young pitching talent, but obviously there's only, you know, 10, 11, 12, you know, spots in, uh, on, on the pitching staff in Baltimore. Does that kind of create, get the competitive juices on a little bit, and understanding that you got guys that, that are putting up good numbers and you got to work your tail off the numbers like that as well? Well, there's always, there's always going to be competition, I'm sure. But, uh, at the same time, we're all pulling for each other. Like if, if Burke can throw the great game, maybe start tonight. You know, I'll get a lot of cinema tags with me. So you know, great job. Right. Go. Right. Good. Um, so there is competition, but at the same time, we're all kind of helping each other. All right. Well, tell us something that the average fan wouldn't know about the minor league life of Jake Arrieta. Well, we we get uh, pretty bored when we're not, you know, in the clubhouse or on the field. So uh, me, Irving, and Snyder, we uh, we're all roommates. And okay. We make. We make uh, beats on, on Irby's computer. We've got a little synth synthesizer, and, you know, a keyboard and stuff like that. Right. We, uh, we put some, some tunes together, and uh, we're, we're trying to actually put some lyrics together and make some songs. It's not, nothing serious. We've got okay. all just for fun. Well, it should be on YouTube soon. I it, think might, it might be. I don't know. We'll see. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so growing up away from the East Coast, has anybody introduced you to the ins and outs of picking a part of Maryland Big Draft? You know, when I first signed, I, I went to uh, G&M Crab Cakes in Baltimore oh, with, uh, with one of the Orioles scouts. Uh -huh. and, I mean, that was the best crab cake. The uh, question is, is, is the Jake Arrieta bobblehead night coming soon to uh, Prince George's Stadium, or is that not on the calendar yet? I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that, that'd be nice to, to have an Arrieta bobblehead. So we'll see. <laughs> we might have to run that up the flagpole. Yeah. Well, Jake, I appreciate it very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Jake Arrieta, clearly one of the young and up-and-coming stars of the Baltimore Orioles.